I tell them, how you all? I will find, hope, you all are fine and tell. Okay, let's begin our subject. Asset and sector are changing earth. Are changing earth. You know, continents are there. At all continents, first millions of ago, that all were united together and because of that some pressures and movements they all divided in seven that continents and the oceans. So how it happened that we will see in this chapter. Okay. The renowned that geologist that John Tuzo Wilson said the earth instead of appearing as an insert statue is a living mobile thing and this refers to the dynamic nature of the earth and you know which has been under going change for millions years ago millions years ago there will be there was a lot of change in the earth's surface movements so that continents were divided. So the earth crust, you know, the earth crust is relatively, it is thin and uh, is broken into the number of that plates called the lithospheric that plates. It is divided in different plates. It is called lithospheric plates. The plates, they are closely, closely they are packed with each other and you know the movement of that plates cause changes of the earth surface the movement of that plates it cause change on the earth surface so you know the movements are caused due to the that uh, certain that endogenic and exogenic that movements are there that forces exogenic and you know that endogenic forces are there that's why that movements were there the forces which act in the interior of the earth interior of the earth are called that endogenic forces and the forces that act on the surface of the earth they are called that exogenic forces you know that endogenic forces it, they cause that earthquakes and volcanoes and exogenous forces they form that depositions of uh, erosion and you know weathering so it forms landforms the theory of the continental drift the scientists different scientists they put different theory of that continents and oceans they explain different theories so one of the theory that founded by the Alfred Wagner a German geophysicist and meteorologist so this is known as the continental this continental trip theory it explained how the continents are there they shifted their position from each other. So according to this theory, millions of years ago, the continents were together and united and they formed a single mass land or land mass or supercontinent are called that Panasia. Panasia it is said. Later, millions of years ago, that internal forces and you know that Panasia shifted their position and it was divided into seven continents and you know that forming that seven continents that formation happened. The water collected between these all that continents to form the oceans. You know the theory of plate tectonic which that states the continents are plates the theory of that plate continents it 
said that the continents are flat floating on the surface of molten mantle and now replaced by the theory of that continental drift. Now we will see theory of that plate tectonics. The earth, the earth lithosphere is broken into many slabs and plates. You know well that earth lithosphere is there, it is broken in many plates and slabs. So this is known as lithosphere or tectonic plates. They move from each other and there is a movement in that plates. They move very slowly throughout the year, means that few millimeters thus they can move during the years. They slowly the movement is very slow. So they float on the surface soft layer of the mantle and you know they move very slowly. The internal heat of the earth it gives them energy to move. So because of that internal heat it moves and you know as the plate moves they pulls, pull or sink, bend and breaks and major landforms were created because of this all movement. So there are three that types of movements are there that divergent plate movements, you know, that convergent plate movements and transform plate movement. So first of all we will see that divergent plate movement. So divergent plate movement occurs when two plates are there, they move away from each other. When two plates move away from each other, it creates that divergent plate movement and it's creating a gap. It creates a gap when the two plates move from each other, there will be a gap. Two plates move and there will be a gap. So it creates a gap. And you know, gaps create and happen on the boundary of that plates. And magma from the mantle that always from the gaps and solidifies to form a new crust. Next is the convergent plate movement. Convergent plate movement, the convergent plate movements happen when two plates move towards each other. Two plates, two plates are there, they move towards each other. Then it happens convergent movement and they collide and due to this movement, one tectonic plate that moves under the other. Two plates are there, they collide, two plates are there, they move towards each other and that due to collide, one plate moves under another plate and it forms mountains and the result they form that mountain or that formation of mountain happening because that two plates moving one plate goes under the another and it forms a mountain. Next movement is the, the transform plate movement. So transform plate movement occurs when two plates slide past each other. Two plates slide past from each other. Two plates are there. They slide past from each other. Slide little bit. Slide it past from each other. And this movement occurs. They horizontally pass from each other. This movement that called earthquakes. Then we will see that mountain building. So mountain building is associated with the movement of that lithospheric plates or tectonic plates. When two plates move, they call folding or holding. So first is that, that folding movement we will see. The collision of two plates, the collision of two plates.
place leads the folding movement up to the top of layer and raise the area. The two plates collide and they raise the area and on the earth these are called the folds and process by which it happens it is called folding. The folding forms that fold mountains and which have up folds and bridges called anticlines and you know down folds toilets are there they are called synclines. Okay. The Himalayas in India, the Alps, you know, these are the example of that fold mountains. Now we'll see next movement that folding. When two plates move apart from each other, two plates move from each other, the earth crust that develops cracks or fold or gap happen. So when two that plates are there, they move from each other and there will be a gap. Two plates move from each other, there will be a gap and it cracks happen. So this fold of forces some blocks and rocks up and others are down. So instead of that all folding over, its crust is there, it pulls apart and breaks up. So that a rib belly or a craven is formed by this movement. You know that when the whole block of a rock cat that this place will allow the cracks, it leads to the formation of block movement. When the whole part flex uh, that displaced along the cracks, it fold that whole mountain. Next we will see that volcanoes. Volcanoes are there. Volcanoes, you can see that. A volcano is an opening or vent in the earth that crust that can let the ash, you know, get hot gases and hot magma escape on the surface of the earth. The magma you know, that reaches on the earth's surface, the magma reaches on the earth's surface is called lava. The passage through which a lava travels through the surface, that is called that vent. And the funnels circular, that depressions around the vent is called that crater. A volcanic mountain is formed when you know fears of volcanoes and eruptions takes place rapidly. Volcanic mountains also erupt form when fears volcanic eruptions take place repeatedly. A repeating movement of that volcanoes it forms that mountain also. That Mount Fuji in Japan is an example of that volcanic. Mountain. Volcanoes are usually located where tectonic that plates mix. Most of the volcanoes that activities and uh, earthquakes takes place around the Pacific Oceans. A total 452 volcanoes in this region have been occurs and. Around this, the current mountains are located around this ocean. You know, on the basis of that uh, nature and frequency of eruption, volcanoes are divided in three categories active volcanoes, dormant volcanoes, and active volcanoes. So, volcanoes are three kinds of there. Active volcanoes are there, you know, volcanoes that keep erupted, erupting that frequent and frequently or which have erupted recently are called that active volcano and they throw that they throw out lava as hot gases and you no know, pieces of rocks and are also called living volcanoes. Mount Etna, then you know Mount Stromboli. 
they are examples of their active volcanoes. Dormant volcanoes are there. Volcanoes which have become quiet after that erupting or have erupted for a long time and are called as dormant volcanoes. They are called as sleeping volcanoes also. And you know, volcanoes may erupt sometime in future. It may erupt sometime in future. And volcanoes that become quiet after that eruption. It may erupt. It may erupt in future. They are called that dormant volcanoes. Extinct volcanoes are there. And extinct volcanoes, they are called dead volcanoes. They have erupted for a hundred of years and there is no possibility of erupt them again in future. Means no possibility of eruption in future. Like they are called that extinct volcanoes and you know that Mount Warning in Australia are example of this volcano and you know these examples these extreme volcanoes they do not erupt in future next we will see that earthquakes you all are familiar about that earthquake so an earthquake is a sudden movement or vibration or tremors we felt on the surface of the earth and it caused due to the volcanic actions and disturbance on the that crust pressure builds up on the tectonic plates and you know that when they collide or rub against each other the result is that taking the plates and vibrations on the surface of the earth when two core plates are there that pressure builds up between that lithospheric plates there will be a pressure on lithospheric plates they move towards each other or collide or rub at each other against each other and it results that the striking of plates and vibrations on the surface of the earth the point below the earth where these vibrations are that begin is called that focus the point below the earth surface where this vibrations begin is called focus and the point directly above the focus on the surface of the earth is called that epicenter the vibrations reach the entire ep the epicenter the vibrations reach the epicenter first and then spread in all directions in concentric waves vibration first start on the earth surface and then it spread in the all direction like concentric waves these waves are called seismic waves so types of that earthquake waves there are different kind of earthquake waves are there earthquake waves or seismic waves are there they are waves are energetic waves and energy waves they travel through the earth layer as a result the earthquake or a volcanic eruption seismology is the study of earthquake and the person who study about the earthquake is called seismologist no there are three types of the earthquake waves are there primary waves secondary waves and surface waves primary waves are there they are longitudinal that in the nature and they travel faster than other all waves they are longitudinal waves they faster they travel faster than other all waves and can pass through the solid liquids and gases secondary waves are there that secondary waves move at right angle to the direction of travel they move in the direction of like the right angle they move in the direction of travel they are slower than primary waves and can pass through solid they can pass through solid only these waves produce a 
strong cycling that action and vibrations it creates strong actions and vibrations on the earth surface surface waves surface waves are the most destructive that waves they travel along the earth surface and they are slower than other waves but they are most destructive waves measuring earth waves you know the instrument used to measure or record the vibrations of an earth wave is called that seismograph and you know the energy released at the time of earthquake is called that it determined as magnitudes and magnitudes or that you know magnitudes or intensity of earthquake they are measured in richter scale so energy released at the time of earthquake is called that magnitudes and these magnitudes are measured in richter scale you know the damage happened damage caused by earthquake you all know that earthquake caused lot of damage in different parts of the world you know earthquake can cause extreme damage to the life and property it may cause landslides in the hilly areas and cracks in the dams and you know flow that flooding of rivers it can cause cracks in the dams lot of damage happen in the cities and you know that hilly areas cracks and dams landslides in the hilly areas it can change a mountain into that landslides and it can change a rivers into the mountains then in cities that buildings that may collapse because of that earthquake and electricity and telephone lines that that fires may get that cut and transport facility it affects a lot of affects on upon on the transport in coastal areas that you know earthquake may raise a lot of damage in the lower sea bed it may raise as tsunamis and may also be called under sea earthquake so that tsunami happen whenever the earthquake will happen strongly in the seas or seas and it can cause that tsunamis so the earthquake cause lot of damage it can crash the dams buildings can collapse and lot of damage happening because of the earthquake so this is the nice about about that Earth changing Earth. You know that how the continents, seven continents, divided and the oceans were divided. This is nice.